If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. With any limit, perhaps the most obvious strategy would be to plug the value that x is approaching into the expression. So we'll go ahead and try to do that. And so we would have infinity raised to the power of 1 over infinity. Now, 1 divided by infinity in essence is 0. So this limit becomes infinity raised to the power of 0. Unfortunately, infinity raised to the power of 0 is known as an indeterminate power, and so we're not able to yet evaluate it. We're going to have to perform another method. And one of those other methods involves setting y equal to this expression right here, basically whatever your function is. So let's go ahead and write out that function. Now after writing that function, we would take the natural log of both sides of that equation, and then using the wonderful properties of logarithms, that's going to allow us to take this power and transfer it into the front of the expression. Now, of course, if we put the ln of x here over 1, we can multiply these two fractions. So 1 multiplied by ln of x will be ln of x, and then x multiplied by 1 will be x. So let's rewrite it. Now, for the sake of clarity, we've used just a solid black color here. After we've simplified it in this manner, what we're going to do next is take the limit as x approaches infinity of both sides of this equation. So we'll write that limit on the left-hand side as well as on the right-hand side. So we've cleaned up the workspace a little bit. We're basically going to leave the left-hand side of the equation alone. We'll come back to it momentarily. On the right-hand side, we can see that x is approaching infinity. And if we were to plug infinity in for x, hopefully we could see that we would have infinity over infinity because we would have the ln of infinity over infinity, and then the ln of infinity is infinity. So we have this indeterminate form, and this is a special indeterminate form. Whenever we have infinity over infinity, we're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. And that rule will allow us to rewrite the limit on the right-hand side. And according to L'Hopital's rule, what we do is we take the derivative of the numerator as well as the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the numerator would be 1 over x, and then the derivative of the denominator is just 1. So we basically have 1 over x over 1, which of course we can just leave as 1 over x. So now if we let x approach infinity, we would have 1 divided by infinity, which as mentioned earlier is equal to 0. So this limit right here is going to equal 0, and we can write it as such. The left-hand side has remained the same, so we'll just recopy it right here. And this result is one that we're going to hold on to and use in just a moment. Let's return to our original limit, which had the expression x raised to the 1 over x. Let's not forget that earlier in the problem, we had let y equal x to the 1 over x. So this limit could be rewritten. So once again, we've replaced x to the 1 over x with y. And then we can do a little bit of an algebraic trick. We can rewrite the limit again but rather than writing y, we can write e raised to the ln of y. And it turns out that that's an advantage, and hopefully we understand that e raised to the ln of any quantity is just that quantity. So for example, if we had e raised to the ln of, let's say, 8, that would equal 8. And that works with a variable, too. So e raised to the ln of y would just equal y. So we've correctly rewritten y as e to the ln of y, and the reason that's advantageous is because the limit laws allow us to take this limit and basically transfer it up here to the numerator. So the limit can be once again rewritten as e raised to the limit as x approaches infinity of the ln of y. Well, we recall earlier that the limit as x approaches infinity of the ln of y was equal to 0. We had proved that earlier. And so we can take this expression right here, this limit, and replace it with 0. So we end up with e to the 0. And then, of course, any quantity to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. And so this becomes the correct answer to this limit. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Remember that you can stay tuned for additional videos. And also send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.